Now let's talk about metabolic acidosis. This is different from respiratory acidosis because unlike respiratory, which is caused by the CO2 being high, we have a metabolic issue. So the CO2 is gonna be normal or it might be low. Uh, but our bicarb is gonna be low and that's what's causing the pH to be low. So what can cause low bicarb? Well, we could have a GI or renal loss of bicarb. For example, renal failure can cause it. Uh, rhabdomyolysis can cause it. We might have increased acid production, so a ketoacidosis, like a diabetic ketoacidosis, chronic alcoholism, malnutrition, lactic acidosis. Now, uh, that can be due to shock, liver dysfunction, maybe some drugs and other diseases can cause it as well. We could also have a client who has ingested too many acids. Now, some signs or symptoms of metabolic acidosis one of them is going to be hyperventilation. So the lungs, in an effort to try to bring the pH back up, you're gonna see deep breathing, deep, very rapid breathing to try to blow off CO2, so to make the blood more alkaline and bring it back into that balance. You might see a headache, confusion, tachycardia. Now, acute metabolic acidosis can cause ventricular dysrhythmia, so it's life-threatening. Whereas chronic metabolic acidosis, it can actually result in calcium issues, bone demineralization, rickets, osteopenia. So what does the body do to try to combat this and try to get homeostasis restored? Well, it's gonna compensate, as I mentioned, with the lungs. So if you have a low bicarb, less than 22, you have a low pH less than 7.35 and you have a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide less than 35 well the lungs are trying to compensate because the pH the pH is still low it's not fully compensated so it's partially compensated metabolic acidosis because the bicarb is what's on the same side as the pH it's what's making it acidic the lungs are blowing off the carbon dioxide in an effort to bring the pH back into a normal limit, but it's not quite there. Now, if you have a low bicarb, less than 22, a low pH, or a regular pH, excuse me, uh, between 7.35 and 7.45, and then you have a low partial pressure of carbon dioxide, less than 35, now, now, the pH has been brought back to normal limits, homeostasis, that balance, has been restored, and so it's fully compensated metabolic acidosis because the lungs are working to compensate it. Okay, now remember, let's put this into critical thinking. Let's apply it to an NCLEX style question. Remember, NCLEX is all about the textbook and it's all critical thinking. So that's exactly what Kaplan is going to help you with as you prepare for the NCLEX. Let's try it out. You have an ABG with a pH of 7.24 a PCO2 of 32, and a bicarb of 18. The client is being treated for DKA. Which of the following is a sign that the client's condition is worsening? Okay, so we have acidosis. Notice that the bicarb is what's causing the acidosis, so it's a metabolic acidosis. And we know, uh, we can verify that it's metabolic because the client is in diabetic ketoacidosis, so DKA. So which of the following is a sign the client's condition is worsening? We have 230 milliliters in urine output in four hours. That's within normal limits. So I don't think they're, that my client's getting worse here. So I can eliminate that one. I have slow, shallow respirations. Okay, I expect my client to have deep and rapid respirations. I'm not sure what's going on with this one. I'm going to hang on to it. I'm going to compare it to number three. The client is restless. I don't like restless. Restless tells me that there's something going on with my client. I'm going to eliminate number two because I don't know that I should expect that, even if the client's getting worse. But number three, if they're suddenly more restless than they were before, or if they were not restless before and now they are, now I've got something that's a problem. It could mean that there's something going on with cerebral perfusion. I'm gonna hang on to that one. But I have to look at number four also. 
the blood glucose is 250. Well, that's pretty good if they were admitted in DKA. In DKA, we expect the blood glucose to be really high. So instead of worsening, that's actually getting better. So I can eliminate number four. Restless, again, it's not expected. It can indicate poor cerebral perfusion. This is the one that I need to go and check up on. This is the one that I'm concerned may mean that my client is getting worse. So again, with these passing level questions, the answer choice that you want might not be there. You have to choose what is best out of what you've been given. And that requires critical thinking.